see anything yet. Hello everyone, welcome to what will be the sweatiest stairwell session thus far. Hi Victoria Bates. I've been sharing this to my page, I don't know how helpful it's been for friends of mine. but. When I scroll down and see all of myself on there, I just go behind it and delete it. <laughs> there we are. So it's real hot in here, y'all. And, uh, that's all I got to say about that. We're going to start <laughs> barreling through and uh, keep, this, keep this going. I hope this finds you uh, doing well wherever you are. And um, I hope it finds you knowing uh, that you're loved and that you're not alone. And that um, if anything uh, can come through this screen to you from me, that and John, by way of you not seeing him, but he's here, I hope you know that uh, we see you. And... Um, We'd love to know how we can pray for you as a church, as a staff, as individuals. And um, if you have any needs that we can help with, we'd love to know. And we'd also love for you guys to comment throughout this time, especially if you see people on here that you know, and um, check in with them, see how they're doing. Um, that's the, kind of the premise of these whole things, is that uh, the music would um, do what music does when we listen to it has the ability to do what only music can do, but the main goal will be that we connect with one another and, and while we're physically distant, we don't become emotionally uh, isolated or distant. So, uh, welcome uh, to this little corner of this sweaty stairwell. Um, I don't know if Dr. Jim Ellis is on here right now, um, but a lot of you that are going to be on here and maybe even watch this after we're live uh, know him. Um, and his daughters and his wife. And, um, Jim's mom uh, passed away yesterday. And um, so I'm thinking of you, uh, buddy. And um, I'm going to sing this song first because Jim, I know, loves this song. Uh, I think it's because it, it has nautical terms and it reminds him of being on boats and stuff on the Coast Guard days. And, but, um, I know he's told me he wants me to sing this at his funeral, which I did not agree to, uh, but I probably would if someone asked me to, but let's hope that's not for a long time, but um, I think it's a good reminder for us to listen to now, and uh, it's certainly true for his mom, who I know was a believer, and um, her next breath after her last one here was uh, certainly a better one than that one before, so... We love you, Jim. And, uh, it's Christ the Sure and Steady Anchor. Matt Boswell and Matt Papa wrote this song, and they're writing some fantastic kind of new uh, that sound like old hymns for the church. So uh, good on them. <laughs> the shore steady
While the tempest rages on, when temptation claims the battle and it seems the night has won, deeper still then goes the anchor, though I justly stand accused, I will hold fast to the anchor this shall never be removed Christ the sure and steady anchor through the floods of unbelief hopeless somehow oh my soul now Calvary, this my ballast of assurance, see his love forever prove, I will hold fast to the anchor, it shall never be removed. No, it shall never Christ the sure and steady anchor as we face the wave of death when these trials give way to glory as we draw our final breath and we will cross a great horizon clouds behind and life Christ the shore of our salvation, ever faithful, ever true. We will hold fast to the anchor, shall never be removed. song could also be for Victoria Bates. <laughs> I thought of you as I started it, but I didn't want to say anything. Victoria's going to get a tattoo of an anchor on her forearm. Or maybe her neck. I can't remember what she told me. <laughs> but, yeah, you should totally do it. I've been in the mood to sing gospel tunes lately. In here, probably because of all the echoing and uh, because I uh, miss home, uh, where I'm from, and my family, and uh, thinking of my grandma, I know I talked about that a couple times ago. Uh, to update you on, on her, if you remember, they were testing her at a nursing home for COVID-19. She tested negative for COVID-19. At the time, three people in that nursing facility were positive for it. She tested negative but had pneumonia, which is not super uncommon for her. Uh, she gets it a lot, which because she just has a lot of health issues. Um, since that negative test, they isolated her, and now 35 people in that facility have COVID-19, and three people have died. And so they've tested her again, I believe, as of a couple days ago. I think she's still negative. Um, they said she's not showing any symptoms of COVID-19, but she is showing symptoms of depression nobody can talk to her and so uh, she's on my mind and she loves this song and I uh, I'm not really in the in the mode of being like a jukebox for people uh, when it comes to playing music but it's my grandma y'all so uh, you can pause it for now or, or you know take one of those cool tests on Facebook to tell you what celebrity you look like that you really don't look like and then come back and we'll be ready uh, for another thing I've never taken one. I just take the typing test on Facebook to keep my skills fast. Uh, 98 words per minute. Come, come get at me. All right?
Yeah, I'll, yeah, sure. Yep, I don't think so. It would probably tell me, like, Dolly Parton. Like, they're not anywhere close to what anyone looks like. Anyway. Precious Lord, take my
Everybody good? I would love it if you would share, if you feel inclined to, in the comments, uh, one thing you feel like um, the, the Lord has taught you in the midst of this season that we, we find ourselves in, uh, and one that um, maybe you didn't, uh, uh, maybe a perspective you didn't have before this, or maybe it was a weakness for you before, and maybe now it's stronger, um, and something that you've grown in. I'd love to know um, and be able to read that later. It'll help me know how to pray for you too. take my pick out of my hand now when I get my water because someone told me I was drinking my water and my pinky out. Glad you are focusing on the good stuff for these. <laughs> this is a song uh, that we sing a lot at our church and it, it's a good prayer I think for all of us right now. Um, I can't remember how old this hymn text is. It's, it's not super old in the scope of some hymns, but um, it's uh, asking God to deliver us by his mercy from all these things, from pride, from malice, um, from a hard heart. But it also uh, asks God to, by his mercy, deliver us from um, when we feel like everything is good and complacency and uh, our health is good and we have everything that we need and or when we're uh, rich or have wealth in, in other ways. Um, so it's the same mercy by the Lord that protects us and delivers us from harm. It's the same mercy that um, delivers us from uh, keeping us complacent and um, which naturally I think in a lot of us leads us to be fairly apathetic toward the world. And so it's only in God's good mercy that he keeps us from both of those things. And I love, uh, there's not another song, new or old, that, I, that I've found that um, speaks to both of these in this kind of way. So that's why we sing it a lot at our church, if you're ever wondering. It, it does a job that I haven't found one, another song that does this good of a job. By Thy Mercy, this is the tune uh, that Indelible Grace uh, put the text to back in 2000. Six or seven or something like that. But anyway. Oh, you know what? That's the tune we play at church. Let me do the one. That won't work well in this because we don't have a band. And we don't have all the drums. So be easy. Satan's power in our time. 
something today somebody tweeted and said it's so American for us to get tired of COVID-19 so we just decide that we're all over it <laughs> and uh, that's how I think I felt uh, in the last week or so particularly and uh, a buddy of mine and I were talking about it the other night on Marco Polo which may be the best app ever made for COVID-19 shelter in place time um, and he was uh, asking me, like, I wonder what it is, like, how all of a sudden we're just kind of tired of it. And uh, it's not like they've said it's all good to go. Um, and I just told him, I was like, we're we're back-to-back -back World War champs, man. That's what we do. And uh, maybe we think we're a little bit better than everyone. I'm not sure. But I hope not for, uh, for my own heart. But it's interesting to sing. You know, I don't know what the, the writer of that hymn was thinking back when this was written. In a time of grief and pain, when you're quite aware of your own weakness, like we are right now, we, we could catch a virus that we don't even know someone else has, and our body has never had, had it before. And um, depending on your, uh, uh, your own uh, body makeup and conditions you know you have and all the ones you don't know you may have, um, man, it might be that no one can even help you. And that's a, a really wild feeling, but um, the Lord is surely um, able to. He's not thwarted by a virus, and um, he's not surprised by it. And so we can, uh, we can sing that song uh, with um, a lot of intentionality in 2020 that he would deliver us, not only from, from a virus or the chance of getting a virus, but deliver us from uh, the, the loneliness we feel that um, is going to continue after the virus goes away. Um, and what might he be showing us during this time if we are lonely? Um, how might he be revealing that in us? And what about our anxiety or what about our depression? Or what about our um, just sheer lack of care for our neighbor? Um, that would be worth uh, crying out to him and asking him to deliver us from it. So I'm grateful for that dead person who wrote that song that we get to sing it. Um, 
This is more. Oh no. That water's gone. Got to back up. Thanks, John. Let me do this for all the all the haters. I've never in my life said let's do this for the haters. said made sense. If not, uh, just uh, listen to this song, and this is what I was trying to say. My worth is not in what I own, not in the strength of flesh and bone, but in the costly wounds of love at the cross. My worth is not in skill or name, in win or lose, in pride or shame, but in the blood of Christ I flow at the cross. i uh-huh. 
today to tell you. Um, this is for sure the oldest song uh, we sing 
um, at our church um, in, in terms of its words. Uh, the tune that we all uh, know, that one that we just sang, minus that little bridge, uh, wasn't uh, written until like 1927. But the text um, was written uh, to honor St. Patrick in the late 400s. And it was kept uh, alive essentially through Irish monks. And then uh, the tune that we sing got put to it in the 20s. So it's real old. Older than anything I know. All Creatures is the second oldest that we do. It's 1225, I think, when that one was written. I only point that out, not like a fun fact thing, but more of just reminding you that um, we, have, we don't have a new faith. Um, we don't have this new idea in Jesus. And uh, this current time we're in is nothing new to him either. We'll end with a song that if you uh, followed through our Sunday liturgy stuff today, you would have sung. Um, and it's just a reminder, uh, the reason I put it in there this week was just a reminder uh, to us in a different, a different song that maybe um, than what we're used to singing, that God is the ruler and the reigner of all things. He's the maker of all things, and um, he's in charge. And so that's the, that's the point of this. Uh, whole life, if I can tell you that. <laughs> That's the secret, is uh, to uh, understand that and make everyone else uh, see that, um, that I believe that in my life. I don't do that perfectly by any means, but I don't know that I've ever sung in this key.